Hello and welcome back to Inter Miami Live. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to another week of Inter Miami action and some more Football Manager stuff. Hopefully this week we actually finish this save off. I think we're getting very close to doing so now. If we have a quick look at the fixture list, you can see that we're really not far to the end of the regular season. Maybe two or three more episodes on that and then maybe two episodes on the playoffs or something like that as we get to the end of the season. If we get to the playoffs, that is, of course. I think we should get to the playoffs. I think the form we've had in recent episodes has picked up and has been good enough, I would say, for the playoffs. And then most of these games have been the Cup rather than the MLS itself. But I think it's looking pretty good. So I'm kind of confident we'll make the playoffs. We'll have two or, two or three more episodes of league fixtures and then we'll get the playoffs. And that should be this done for the season. And if we do one season like this, we still would do it as a bit of an experiment, just treating it like a live stream and things like that. And for the most part, it's been it's been different. It's been very different to what I'm used to doing, and um, I'll be completely honest with you, I've not enjoyed it as much as my usual content for you. Um, and I'm not sure if that reflects in the way I've presented it and the way I come across in videos. Perhaps it does. I know that perhaps you guys haven't enjoyed it so much because the I, I can see the metrics. The metrics are down on pretty much everything for this save compared to hop to a top or saves before that and things like that. So it was just a little experiment to see if you guys enjoyed it and things like that. And perhaps you guys haven't enjoyed it as much as you thought you might or I thought you might. And I've not enjoyed it as much as I thought I was going to enjoy it and things like that. But we're going to see the season out and hopefully have a great time doing it as well. It is good fun to sort of take a bit more a relaxed setup and approach to video creation. I have quite enjoyed that to be fair. Just a bit more relaxed and just going with the flow a little bit more. That's quite nice. But for the overall package, I prefer what I, what I usually do essentially, which is more condensed episodes, uh, showing two games and playing some games off camera and having it a bit more focused and things like that and more snappy editing and all that kind of stuff. That's what I prefer myself and things like that. And that's what I've discovered by doing this. And it's always good to experiment with different th ways of doing things because you find out more about yourself, what you do like and what you don't like. You'll have seen on the channel before, we had FIFA videos and we had uh, an F1 video as well. And I love those games, but making videos on them, I really didn't enjoy it. So I stopped it sort of thing. That's that's how I found out that that wasn't going to be for me and why I love Football Manager so much. I find it so easy and interesting to make videos on this sort of game. So that's that basically coming up today we've got new york city fc we've then got la galaxy in the us cup semi-final of dc united and maybe even new england revolution as well i think we'll probably go for those particular games maybe even new york uh, red bulls as well depending on the time right Going back to the news then, the first bit of news that I've seen since last episode, I just went forward a couple of days. Uh, obviously, LA Galaxy must have won their game in the uh, US Cup, which means we're drawn against them in the US Cup semi-final. But the board obviously very delighted because that means we are now challenging for silverware because we're right in the semi-finals of the Cup down to the final four. And we've completed that four years ahead of schedule. So the board obviously very happy with me uh, for that, which is great to see. Thank you very much, board. Uh, as you can see, we've got a few days, well, quite a few days off actually, more than a week off before the game against New York City. FC uh, and in that time Agadello is currently on international duty uh, for the Olympics we saw that a couple episodes ago he's gone to the Olympics uh, in Japan to play for America even though he's not under 23 I think under 23 sides go to the Olympics but they must have obviously a few slots for over 23 players and Agadello has been picked so hopefully he does well for them hopefully he scores a couple of goals at the Olympics and helps the USA onto like the silver medal I suppose actually Great Britain don't enter a team do they so America for what I care can win the gold medal I don't really mind otherwise Hopefully Angadele will do that. Uh, someone's been called up to the Bolivian squad, but he's the guy that's on loan elsewhere that we didn't really know much about whatsoever. So we don't really care too much about him if we're being honest with ourselves. So fair play. As you can see from this table right now, uh, we actually have a game in hand on a couple teams and things like that. So our position of fifth in the Eastern Conference could improve actually to third if we win our games in hand which would be great so that'd be really good uh, going I've got to say we are level on games played though with DC United and Atlanta United so it's going to take quite a big effort to catch up to them but if we can come top three in our conference that'll be fantastic and put us in good stead for the playoffs as well which would be great Cincinnati want a trade they want Figal you cannot have Figal whatsoever no Figal for you Figal is staying right where he is in into Miami. He loves it here. We love him here. He's been a fantastic defender. He's probably the best player we've got, actually, I would say. He's really solid at the back. Um, and I think he is a star for the squad. And I think in real life, into Miami have done very well picking him up as well. 
Um, obviously as well, I've probably neglected to mention it so far, there were no videos over the weekend. That was because it was my birthday over the weekend. And as much as I wanted to just sit down the entire weekend, first and foremost to watch the Formula 1, but that got cancelled. I was more excited about the Formula 1 than my birthday because I think as you get older, that that sort of thing happened, especially for the first race of the season. So I was more excited for the F1 than my birthday. Of course, that all got cancelled. And you may have seen me ranting on Twitter about that just a little bit. Um, and then obviously my birthday as well. I would love to just sit here and just make videos on my birthday because I just find that more entertaining than anything else. You know, it's what I enjoy doing. That's why I make videos for you guys. I really enjoy it. But of course family they want to do things with you my girlfriend wants to do things with me on my birthday and things like that and I've got to satisfy them haven't I so I had the weekend off to celebrate with them as much as I just wanted to be which sounds really stupid doesn't it, it sounds really lame but you know as you get older birthdays aren't really that important I don't think um I mean I like to make a fuss out of people on their birthdays obviously because it's the nice thing to do but when it's me personally I'm not so keen on the fuss being made about me and things like that so I would have just rather had the weekends myself to make videos, which is a bit a bit lame, really, isn't it? And perhaps not in keeping with what you should be doing, but there we go. Right, into the game against New York City FC. Juan Agudelo needs to come off to his international duty, so Carranza will start up front instead. And it means that we're going to have to bring someone else on the bench, and that someone is going to be Heidman. So no recognised striker on the bench, though Carranza is going to have to be scoring plenty of goals. Other than that, do we want to bring Pellegrini back on the pitch for Louis Morgan? Because Morgan's been playing really well. In fact, in the last five games or so, he's been the best player. So I think we leave him on the pitch. He's, he's got to keep playing games, I think. He looks really good. So other than that, actually, we will leave it as it is. No more changes to the lineup. Let's submit this team and try and beat New York City FC. A game, as we get towards the end of the season, is becoming must-win, really. We've got to keep winning games to keep that momentum going because once you hit the playoffs, it's a knockout competition and you have to be on your A game every single game to keep going. How much of a boost is Keaton Parks' absence to your chance of winning? I presume he's a very good player for New York City FC. Um, I'm focusing what we can do rather than what we can't do. Um, is that what it says? I'm focusing what we can do rather than what they're doing, of course. That's what I'm going to say. The public wants to have a proper answer from you. I've given you a proper answer. I'm, focus I'm going to say the exact same thing again. There we go. Hopefully that annoys the press nicely. Right, kickoff is upon us here today. Into Miami, New York City FC. They're playing at our place, so hopefully... I mean, we are in mid-summer right now, so this should be sweltering. Like, hopefully the New York City players just aren't used to these conditions and we just make the most of it and get a good victory here. But it's going to be absolutely sweltering in Miami. And I think we're in June now or something like that. Definitely May, June sort of time. It's going to be so, so hot for the players out there. As New York are actually a team coming forward right now as they put the ball across the time. They don't really do much with it, I've got to say. And uh, they actually can win possession back. And New York coming forward once again into the area. Can they get the ball in there, though? Just dangling on the edge of the area. Can they get it in? They finally do get it in. And they've nearly scored from it. I thought that was going in the back of the net. Good move, good move, sorry, from New York City FC. As we're playing in 35-degree heat here in Miami. And that's going to be really humid as well. Not just hot. Really hot, sticky, wet, humid. It's honestly... It must be terrible conditions to play in. I, I don't envy these players whatsoever. But I suppose for a lot of American clubs, it's probably preferable to playing in, I don't know, minus 10 in Seattle in winter or something like that, perhaps. That's perhaps the thinking behind the, the summer system for the MLS. We get to half time. Only the one highlight, and that was for New York City FC. But we are dominating the stats right now. So hopefully a goal will come for us in the second half. Passionately, go out there. You can still win this game. Only Will Trapp looks motivated by that. And he's played the best on the pitch so far with his 7 rating. None of the New York City players are playing particularly well. So obviously this is our game for the taking as Morgan puts the ball into the middle. Clear, but only as far as Trapp, who plays it back to Morgan, who has another chance of putting it across. Kisivetti with a shot. Third time for, um, for Morgan to put it across the area. The third time it's cleared away and New York City gets away with that one. That's pleasing, though. A bit more of that. That would be fantastic as Figal on the ball forwards right now, our best centre-back. Plays it across to Long. Long racing into their half of the pitch as he looks to pick out a pass forward. Out towards Powell, which is decent. He plays it back towards Long. No real support for him, though. And he's under pressure now significantly and has to play it all the way back to Robles in goal, which obviously isn't quite ideal. But up forward to Zuratuza, who's playing today. Well, I didn't even realise that. Zuratuza's playing. Which means we don't have to register him. I completely forgot about that. And to top it all off, Julian Carranza scores the goal. I completely, because obviously I've not played this over the weekend. And I completely forgot that Zuratuz would join the club. And that we weren't able to register him. And we thought at the time that 
if he can't be registered despite being a designated player, he cannot play games. But clearly, because he is a designated player, he doesn't need to be registered. So, oh, that's fantastic. That's really good, actually, because I was having a little bit of a panic at the end of last week thinking how are we going to you know, justify Zero Two to joining the squad and how are we going to make our midfield better if we can't actually bring any players into the squad because we are over the wage salary cap. But clearly, it doesn't matter because I've completely neglected to see that Zero Two is playing up until that point, which maybe shows that he's been you know, not the best player. He's not really making an impact so far. But he started off that move there, which leaded to Carranza's goal, which is fantastic. Zeratuza on the ball in towards Will Trap as Pizarro comes forward back to Zeratuza up towards Morgan. Morgan to come and cut inside their area, shoots and will oh, the less about that one, the better. That was a terrible, terrible shot. But at least we are winning the game now, which is really important with Zeratuza helping us out to, to get the win. As it stands right now, 20 minutes to go and New York City FC with an attacking throw-in out towards Saba into Valentin, their number two, back to Saba. They're on the edge of the area. Ring just about gets there ahead of our number 16, which I think is Morgan. Morgan putting their defenders under pressure, and it always goes back to the keeper, which is quite nice. A good bit of pressure there, but Kisaveta wins the ball and heads it down towards Will Trap. Can he find the ball forward to Carranza? He can Carranza to make it to Nelly. Does with his eighth goal of the season. Julian Carranza finding a little bit of form today as we go 2 up against New York City FC. And into third in the conference, which is absolutely fantastic as things stand right now. Up to third, level on games with Atlanta. But Atlanta must have lost their game or drew their game because we're only two points behind them. We are six points behind DC United. So you'd argue at this stage, DC United are the team to go on to. If someone just hit the crossbar then from us. That was, I mean, we just missed that. I think it could have been Pizarro with the crossbar there. Uh, but DC United, as they are six points clear of us, level on game to us. We've just hit that over the ball, over the bar as well from that corner. DC United, as I say, are the team to beat. They are probably the best team in the conference right now and will go on to, I would imagine, win it unless they do implode at the very end. Then it might open the door to us into Miami or even New York City FC, who we've overtaken today by beating them 2-0, which is a fantastic result. A good couple of weeks ago in terms of game weeks, that is when we are on a bit of a losing streak, I would have said today would be an absolute write-off and we would just not be able to turn things around. But for some rate or some reason or another, we've been... Hey, ooh, okay, well, let's not get too excited about how we play our football because that was a terrible goal to concede in the 90th minute as well. What went wrong here? So their man Hack on the ball just hoofs it forwards and I think it was just a bit of a mix-up between Robles and the defenders as who was going to get it and then their guy... Alamo just goes and scores it. That's a terrible defensive error to make. And luckily, we were tuned up at the time. Otherwise, I would have been just slating the boys for throwing away an easy three points there with a terrible goal. As Pizarro gets the ball out towards Kisaveta. Can we retain that two-goal lead? We can't quite. But I think the clock is going to tick down now. And there we go. The final whistle is blown. Inter Miami 2, New York City FC 1. A very important victory there. Takes within two points of Atlanta United. Six points inside of DC United. Fingers crossed then. We can start to get back ahead of them. If I remember rightly, as I send uh, Jordan Platt off to do that press conference, uh, we do have DC United coming up soon. We don't have any more games against Atlanta United. We played them early on in the season, didn't we? Atlanta, we drew 1-1 and then lost 1-0. So, they, you know, there were games that we can forget about. But we did draw against DC United at the start of the season. If we can get a win against DC after this LA Galaxy game, that would be crucial Obviously, next, though, is the LA Galaxy game. That's 17 days off until that. 17 days off. You know what? In these kind of situations where it's two, two, a week, two weeks or more for the next game, I know we're meant to be doing this as a live stream, but I don't really know how or what I can talk to you about over the five or ten minutes it's going to take to get there, and I think that's going to be quite boring for you. So... For the one time in this save where it is going to take a bloody long time to actually get anything done. Julian Carranza picks up player or second in player of the week and is named in the team of the week alongside Will Trap as well. But as I was saying, not really much I can talk about for two weeks, I don't think, to keep you entertained. It's not going to be that entertaining for you to just watch this screen while I talk for 10 minutes or so. So I'll see you at the LA Galaxy game. Although before I do go forward, I will just update you that this has just come through. The MLS All-Star squad has been announced with Aaron Long, Nicholas Fagal and Rodolfo Pizarro being named in the squad. Um, they play Tottenham Hotspur, which is quite interesting. The MLS have a 
a system or a, a game every season where they get their best players and put them against a really good foreign side. This time it's Tottenham Hotspur. And I think usually it's actually a pretty close game. So I'll uh, update you on this one when it all actually happens in a couple of days time. And then I'll, yeah, I'll update you. And I tell you what, the MLS All-Stars did give Tottenham a good game. A 1-0 victory for them. Figal and Long keeping a clean sheet at the back. Pizarro playing terribly, apparently on 6.5 rating. But at least the MLS All-Stars won against, I would say, probably... I want to say, well, maybe not actually. It's a pretty strong Tottenham line. There's no Lloris, there's no Harry Kane, but perhaps they've moved on, of course, in this version of Football Manager. So that's obviously a little bit different. So welcome to the MLS All-Stars. Uh, we also do have back at our disposal, Agadello. Uh, you know, United States in the Olympics got through their group stage. Now, Agadello actually picked up with two goals in a 3-2 loss to the Spain under-23s. Didn't score against New Zealand or against Japan. Uh, so if we look to the quarterfinals, though, and we look for America's under-23s, they lost 2-1 to Romania's under-23s, and uh, Christian Pulisic scored the goal in that one. Agadello not even starting, I don't think, in that game. Came on as a substitute, but obviously didn't score the goals. So got two goals for them, uh, which was obviously quite good, but couldn't help them to progress to get a medal in the Olympics. But it is good because he is back at the squad right now and ready to take on LA Galaxy in the US Cup semi-final. So that's great stuff. Other than that, nothing really happened of noteworthy interest in between the little cuts between uh, games and things like that. We are going to keep the lineup the exact same as it was, though. So whilst Agadello has scored a couple of goals on international duty, Carranza scored goals with the squad, and Agadello's not done that for a little while. So we're going to leave Carranza up front, and for the rest of the squad who haven't played for two weeks or so, they all look pretty fit. So we're going to leave a team that did manage to beat New York City 2-1 pretty much as it is. So we're going to go straight into the game then. Uh, the other semi-final is not going on right now. So hopefully we get through this and win it. That would be fantastic if we do manage to do that. I'd, be, I'd love it if that was the case. Right. Into this game then. Looking for a place in the final. LA Galaxy are going to be giving it their all out there. You come into this game on some good form whilst your opponents do not. Do you perhaps fear complacency ahead of kickoff? Uh, it's a different sort of challenge today. We have to be focused on playing our game and be clinical in front of goal. We'll say that. As the leading scorers in the US Cup, which apparently we are, which is a bit weird, are you looking forward to another positive match in front of the goal? That's certainly the aim. We'll be trying to score, we'll try and score some goals. How are you approaching the task of breaching the US Cup's best defence? Well, that's a little bit frustrating, isn't it? Uh, we have to find a way to expose their weakness. We'll say that. There we go. What? So many questions. How do you intend to seize the initiative against an opponent who, like Inter Miami, prefer to dominate possession? I'm expecting a fantastic contest. We'll just say that and just cool things off. Right. Into the game against LA Galaxy then. A win here today books us into the cup final, which would be fantastic. Azura Tuza shoots from distance and scores his second goal for the club. This one comes inside a minute of the game against LA Galaxy and gives us that all-important lift. If we score a goal early on, that really dampens the opposition. They're going to be down out of this game now. Hopefully, we're going to take this and maybe score another goal or two in the next 20 minutes. That would be fantastic. And then we have the game wrapped up by half time. But a fantastic, perfect start to the game, I've got to say. Couldn't go any better. Zero Twos are already proving his worth to the squad and being a worthy designated player coming into the side. Hopefully, I think him and Will Trapper are starting to form quite a nice partnership. Hopefully, by the end of the season, that can be really, really solid. And we can keep going forward with that one. So that'd be great. As Powell into Zura Tuza, backed out to Kisaveta, who can put the ball across the box. Come on, let's grab a second goal here. He takes the shot on himself. Perhaps a little bit selfishly there when there were players waiting in the middle for his ball, his ball through the middle. They could just tap it in inside the 60-yard box. Unfortunately, it didn't quite happen. But Kisaveta looking to challenge the LA Galaxy <clears throat> defense here as they are looking to build out from the back. Coldwell up forward. Rubbish ball up towards Figal, who collects that loose ball, and Long can play it forward. No, he can't. He can lose it instead. LA Galaxy on the counter-attack. Great recovery there. Fantastic recovery, and a huge save from Robles right at the end. I've got to say, it was a terrible mistake to make, but Long really paid for it there. Uh, Long, um, It is Long, isn't it, number four? Long, yeah, Long. He, I say paid for it. I meant to say he recovered well. He Paid the price for his mistake by losing possession, but then recovered. I've probably butchered that. I think I meant to say something completely different. And again, there's the beauty of doing this without editing. If I was editing these videos properly like I normally do, I'd, I wouldn't come across like an idiot, which is probably why so many people subscribe to the channel, because I just look like I know what I'm doing until you watch these sort of videos, and I just don't know what I'm doing at all. And uh, it's all exposed. Tom FM exposed. We can maybe have that as a title, and that might get some views. I don't know. Right. 
into the second half now, which is pretty good going. We are still winning this game, but Christian Pavon can turn the game on its head because he's such a good player. He loses possession though, and Carranza has a chance now to take on the entire LA Galaxy defence, and nearly it pays off for him. Nearly, nearly pays off as his shot just about saved there by the keeper, Blaze. Sweat though with a good throw in, in towards Zeratuza, who puts it into the middle, and Carranza's there. The keeper rooted to the spot. Carranza picks up his third goal in two games, his ninth of this season. Fantastic stuff from him. And by looks of things, with 40 minutes left on the clock, we're 2 0 up. I want to say we're going to the US Cup final, which is really exciting. I'm buzzing for that one. Hopefully it happens as the clock's going to just slowly tick down. We'll make some changes. We do have a game coming up in a couple of days' time. So I want to bring Agadello on for Kisveta. He's not played massively well, I don't think, out there. Uh, Pellegrini can come on at Fort Morgan as well. Let's try and get these guys a bit of match sharpness and hopefully get them scoring some goals towards the end of the game. And to give him some match sharpness, Lillard can come on for Figal at centre-back as well for the final half hour or so. So three changes all at once, perhaps a little bit risky. But I'd like to think after we tunnel up with less than 15 minutes to go now, we can't be making the mistakes that are going to cost us the game right now. As 10 minutes to go... LA Galaxy players looking uninterested, also looking very tired. I see they must have played a couple games in there as well. Um, I think a few teams played. I think San Jose played a game because they are now guaranteed to have a playoff spot. They're the first team qualified for the playoffs. I did see that come from the news articles actually. Is LA Galaxy nearly pulling one back towards the end there? Uh, Powell's been booked. Let's turn to ease off challenges. Well, that's disappeared. So let's not turn to ease off challenges. That's when he's going to get a red card now. I can guarantee it. Um, but by looks of things, it should be okay because we've gone and won the game 2-0 and we are into the US Cup final in our first season. I love a good cup run and we seem to do pretty well in them recent seasons on across various saves. So, fantastic stuff there. 2-0 against the Galaxy. I'll do his post-match press conference just because we're going to a cup final, which is fantastic. You've managed to guide into Miami into a first ever US Cup final. Congratulations. You must be delighted. I'm delighted for the players, fans. They richly deserve it. I'm proud to be part of the squad. The fairy tale continues. You must be delighted to progress further into the competition. It's a brilliant feeling. Yeah, you must be happy with that win, right? We were excellent throughout and deserved the win. We were excellent, actually. We dominated all parts of that game. Jario has been playing very well whilst on loan at Bolivar. How do you envisage his long-term development? Well, I don't really envisage it at all because he's we don't care about him. We're finishing this at the end of the season, so we don't really care about him too much. I'm just going to say I prefer to talk about players who are currently at the club. It's unfair to talk about him when he's elsewhere. We'll say that as man of the match, David Zuratuza, who has been playing fantastically well. Thank you for coming into the squad and really changing our fortunes, I've got to say. Since he joined the squad uh, for that game against Minnesota United... We've not lost, which is fantastic stuff. You love to see it. Transfer deadline day today for American clubs. We're not making any transfers. We've already got our transfer in it in Zero Twoza, our designated player, which is fantastic stuff. Right, DC United is coming up in a couple of days' time. That's going to be a hugely important game, a hugely important game, as we are also playing DC United in the cup final. Whoa, now, that was also going to be a hugely important game. Right then, that's going to be exciting. Very, very exciting. DC United coming up. I think what we might do is call this episode after this DC United game because uh, I am recording this on Monday and this is meant to come up Monday night. And because I do longer episodes, it does take longer for it to render. It takes longer for it to upload. And obviously, I've had these issues with processing videos, as you've noticed recently as well, because some of them are late. Some just don't turn up because the processing is really weird. So what I'll do is I'll probably make this one a little bit shorter just to make sure it's up and things like that. But then we will finish off the regular season in the next two episodes. So there will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games across two episodes, which should be quite good fun. So look forward to those ones as DC United is coming up today. We have to get the win here today. If we want to have a chance of topping our conference, a win against DC United is crucial. And again, I don't want to change that lineup whatsoever because that lineup is really, really good. Everyone's been playing really well. Maybe we'll put Lewis Morgan off the pitch. We'll bring Pellegrini on. That might be the only change to make because Morgan's form's dipped a little bit and Pellegrini's been itching and chomping at the bit to get into the score. But that's the one change that we will make. Carranza's still scoring goals, so we'll leave him on the pitch for now. It's a shame that Agadello never continued that scoring run he was on right at the start of the season. Because if he did, we would be far and away one of the best sides in the league, I've got to say. Kickoff is upon us. DC United versus Inter Miami. A huge game right now. Now, they've 
play an extra game than us. And by loads of things in that extra game, which I must have not really missed, they lost to Philadelphia. Now, that's huge. A win here today, then, would put us up to 45 points. They'd be on 48 points. But there'd only be a three-point gap between us, Atlanta, and DC United. That, that is big. So, a good result here today will go an awful long way into deciding who's going to top the Eastern Conference. As Kisaveta on the ball, gets it forward. Not the best ball forward, though. But do we win the midfield battle? We don't. Felipe looking to get it cleared for DC United as they look to build down this left-hand side of the pitch right now. They play it back defensively, though. DC United back to their goalkeeper, Hamid. Hamid up towards their midfield once again. And... DC United being very, very patient with their play and their builder, but they've got it into the area. Figal with a great challenge there, but the cross is still going to come into the area, and they've nearly put that one in the back of the net. Excuse me, as I'm sort of coughing and burping a little bit there. That's a bit weird. Uh, Zuratuza has picked up an injury, and Kisaveta is down on um, his condition. I don't think both of them have picked up knocks and injuries, which isn't great. We may look to change that at half time and take them both off the pitch. Sweat in towards Trap, Trap up towards Kisaveta, who I think we might want to take off if he doesn't start to recover. The injured Zuratuza plays a fantastic ball up towards Pellegrini, who can put the ball into the middle. Back to Zuratuza, Zuratuza across, cleared, but only as far as Pau. But we'd have to build the play all the way back up again as Long puts it back out towards Kisaveta. Doesn't quite reach its intended target. And now is it DC United's chance to come forward? No, Ben Sweat gets in the way there. Pellegrini on the ball. Can he just? Get it forward nicely. Kisaveta back to trap, back to Kisaveta, back to trap, who shoots from distance. And what an absolute finish that is. That is a goal that can win you a conference. Wow, that was superb. Pellegrini into Zuratuza then, who played into Kisaveta. And then him and Trap just sort of play it around nicely. And then Trap just first time shoots from about 25 yards out into the top corner, past the keeper. That's a goal to remember. That's a very, very special goal. Unfortunately, Kisaveta's condition is not improving and Zuratuza is still injured. So both those players are going to come off at half-time to try and mitigate any sort of real injuries. As Heidman's going to come on for him and Kisaveta's going to come off for Agadello there. Into the dressing room, though, passionately. I'm pleased how things are going. Keep it up. Let's start the second half and really just take it to DC United now. It's a very close game in terms of the stats. DC having slightly more shots. We are bossing the possession as it stands right now, which is what we like to see. We just need to hold on, stay positive. If we can grab a second goal, that would be fantastic as Powell into the middle, cleared only as far as Ben Sweat, Heidman, Ben Sweat, Pizarro, Carranza, Agadello. Agadello with a fantastic finish there, his ninth of the season. Him and Carranza surely should be getting at least... 12 goals this season now, I should say, between or both of them. Uh, 24 between, that'd be great. Maybe 25 between, that'd be what we'd like to see. But great little attacking move there. One-touch football, and it ends up with a goal. 30 minutes ago, DC United nil into Miami 2. We're hitting form at the perfect time this season. The perfect time. We're now going on a bit of a run to try and get ourselves on top of the conference. It stands right now, if we win this game, we will be... Only three points behind Atlanta and DC United. Now, if we win the game in hand, we only go as high as second because uh, in America, the MLS, it's done on points and then how many games you've won. And if we win our game in hand, we'll have still won less games than DC United. So we'll have to rely on DC United also slipping up elsewhere and us picking up a couple more wins where they don't pick up wins. So that's going to be quite a big challenge for us. But should we end up both on the level amounts of, of wins, so end up on 15 wins each at the end of the season, it then goes down to goal difference. And I know that our goal difference is better. And this game is certainly helping. And if we can grab a third one right at the end, that will help even more as Pizarro's shot saved by Hamid at the near post there. But with two minutes ago, I think that should be enough to round off today's episode. Three wins from three games. Absolutely fantastic stuff. We're in touching distance now of the top of the Eastern Conference. And we're also in the final of the MLS, or the, uh, the US Cup, sorry, against DC United. Another performance like that, that would be absolutely fantastic. I don't know why we're playing it at DC United Stadium. Not sure why it's not a neutral venue, but we can go to DC again, like we did today, win 2-0 again, 
that would be perfect. So tomorrow's episode is going to be absolutely fantastic. I am really looking forward to that one as we approach the end of the regular season. So thank you ever so much for watching today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have done, please do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if any around here. And I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.